Basketball Talk Pro. Well, today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, yourself having assistance, and I would also like to talk to the assistants that watch the uh, show. Uh, I, you know, it's a very difficult uh, subject to define and give you any real uh, instinctive uh, advice on it. Um, it, it, it. It's a little bit that you, each person has his own little things that he's looking for. But I think there's some principles that I'd like to pass on to you from my own experience. I've been very fortunate in some 40 to 50 years in this business uh, of having very good assistance. I've had some very bad assistance also. I don't think you can help but uh, have that happen to you. Your evaluation can be very um, well defined and very well organized, but it still boils down to feelings. Uh, even though you've got a, uh, you know, a system that you rate uh, and evaluate from, uh, it, it kind of comes down to uh, feelings, but it also comes down to what you, um, what you are looking for, what you hold uh, that is important to you. Might not be as important to many coaches. Um, so I, uh, you know, it's easy to say, well, you know, I look for loyalty, I look for expertise, um, and there can be other aspects of it. You know, some people look for a specific expert in a in a skill or uh, something like that. I, I have found that the best assistants not always are the best um, as far as recognition is concerned and, um, and that they're popular or that they uh, are friendly, uh, you know, they, they're, they're the kind of assistant to uh, talk to you while, you while you're looking for an assistant to call you up and introduce themselves and network with you. Uh, actually, the assistant that I really have found makes a difference for me uh, has one thing, and that is he shares my vision. He shares my mission. Uh, I think that, in fact, I know that I did a video uh, based on the fact that most things accomplished at a high level are accomplished with two people. Uh, maybe one is a little bit more uh, no one, uh, but you can just go down the list uh, of uh, great accomplishments. It's usually two people. Uh, and uh, But the key to that is that they share the same uh, vision and the same mission. They are absorbed in uh, reaching something, reaching their goals. And if you have someone like that with you, uh, I think it just enhances your, oppor uh, uh, your opportunity for success. I can, I, in doing this, preparing for this, I look back on uh, the assistance that I've had and I looked also at the seasons we had when I knew I had the, the assistant sitting next to me was just as determined and just as enthusiastic about what we were doing and where were we going and how, what we wanted to reach. Um, when I had that, I usually had very, very good seasons, and very good um, periods of time because most of those assistants that shared that with me and were honest uh, stayed with me unless they had an opportunity for a better position with but most of them uh, spent a fairly substantial amount of time with me so I, I think for personally I would look for that 
some people look for loyalty, but if, you, if your assistant is as enthusiastic and passionate about your mission, you're, you're together trying to achieve, chances are he's going to be very loyal also. And chances are he's going to develop uh, a great deal, if he doesn't have it, of expertise in what you are doing. Now, I'm talking to you as a head coach, or I don't like that term. To me, a, a person that's in charge is just a coach. Uh, but um, for the assistants that are listening, the best thing I can say to you is listen to what I'm saying and that's the kind of assistant I would advise you uh, to become uh, and, uh, and work uh, towards. As far as duties are concerned, I don't like to be specific with assistants. Um, you know, I don't have a an offensive coach or a defensive coach. I think it's very hard in basketball and I think you're dreaming. Football is different, baseball is different, football is to me very, it has to be that specific because of the numbers. But we only have 12 players and our game changes from offense to defense so fast you can't have two guys uh, trying to control anything because we are so dependent on each other, on each, each area. Our offense can make our defense and our defense can make our offense. Uh, and so uh, my tendency is, and I think I would advise this to you, is don't try to do that. You know, let the football guys do that. Uh, but you want guys that can run both offense and defense and help you in both areas. Now, you, when you get them, you may assign them to watch the defense, watch the offense, or uh, things like that. But I like the kind of guy that uh, can come up and help me with offense or uh, with defense. He's a coach. That's the kind of assistance uh, I like. And that goes for player development, too. Um, you know, to me, you give me two good guys with me, we don't know how to develop players. I don't need any special people to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to develop them the way that I would like them to play for me and for our system. Uh, and so uh, the fact that a guy has some expertise as a big man coach or a guard coach or whatever in developing players uh, I think if you have two good guys, you can develop your players. Now, you may want more coach, coaches that would just pass them the ball and do what you tell them to do. Um, but um, I, I don't know that you need very many. I see a lot of suits on benches that I don't know what in the world they're doing uh, with all of them. And um, the other thing about assistants and, and coaches working together uh, is I because of basketball you got to remember we have our own uh, idiosyncrasies in our sport I I'm very conscious of having one voice um, so my assistants don't take over a practice or part of a practice or step in and say, start telling the players what's, it, it's me, you know, my voice that I want them to be attuned to. Um, my my uh, assistants generally are helping players off the, the uh, actual drill, maybe pointing out to them what I want. Uh, they, I tell them, be very careful that you understand what I want. I don't want you telling a player something and it's not what I want. That makes it very difficult for the player for, and for me. Uh, so I, I prefer that they, I'd, I'd rather have them say nothing than 
to say something wrong. And I, I have watched this very closely and it, I, I don't care how, how well you, uh, you teach your assistants, they will say it differently than you. And they do that because they have a different vision of what you're talking about. Uh, they have a different perception until they have worked with you for a long time and you and them have had a chance to converse about these things until they fine tune what they are talking to a player about to what we want. Uh, I can't tell you how many incidents I've seen where players, uh, coaches are just telling the player something different. Uh, and that's very confusing for the players. My feeling on responsibility is very simple. You earn it. You earn responsibility. You're not given it. You're, uh, the head coach, I, I hate that term again, but I tend to try to show you the difference, is that uh, he's not there to uh, make sure the, uh, the assistants are happy. Uh, the assistants have to prove to you that they are capable of doing other things for you. Uh, and the more that they prove to you, the higher they will rise in your mind and the more that will be given to them. Uh, you, do, you know, delegating is a wonderful word and it's used a lot, uh, but you've got to be very careful with it. Some coaches think they've got to delegate everything. Uh, I don't delegate hardly anything, um, you know, in our sport. Uh, it's, it's a small enough number where I want them to know exactly what I'm saying to them and what I want uh, of the players. Well, that was kind of a brief discussion on a subject that probably requires more, more time. I've never spoken to a basketball talk pro about it before. Not that I don't think it's important. I mean, my feeling on having the right assistance is a uh, very strong feeling for me. I know I need, I must have the right kind of assistant or two. But what you want to guard against is that every individual is primarily looking out for themselves. So they perceive things based on that, that feeling. Uh, they are thinking, you're, you're telling them something, and what they're thinking is, how does this affect me? You know, am I going to get more responsibility? Am I going to get a bigger, better job? You know, are, are they going to like me better? Uh, all of those things, or fear. I've got to be careful, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Uh, all of these uh, things are going through their mind. They tend to be very concerned about themselves. When I told you one other assistant that is tied into your mission, that's the guy that probably is still thinking that. It's, it's natural. Uh, but he, he, he's involved in what we're doing and wants to do it, wants, wants it to come out the same way uh, I do. Well, if you have three assistants, four assistants, each one you add, you're going to have more people, more of them, that tend to really are using the position to help themselves. Uh, they become um, very ingrained in what they are. And you, you don't want too many of those because they're the guys that are probably going to say the wrong thing to get your job or get the job of the, the next assistant. Uh, 
it, that's a very, um, it can be very treacherous. I've been through all of that. Uh, you know, I, I've never, I haven't spent a lot of time as an assistant, but it just happened it was in the NBA. And um, the, um, it, it's pretty cutthroat. Uh, I didn't like that, that feeling at all. Uh, and if you did just jump in with your coach and you felt the same way, it wasn't, it wasn't really accepted by the others. Uh, because the head coach then tended to spend a little bit more time with you or de depend on you more. And when that happens, and then the other guys, you know, they have a negative look towards everything uh, you do. And um, pretty soon that can uh, transpire into some pretty negative uh, things happening, both in, with the players and uh, with, you, you know, your people that are over you, whether it's a general manager or athletic director, um, it's, uh, it can be a very uh, nasty thing. Uh, so don't look for numbers. Look for the right people. Look for the people that are, want to do what you uh, want to do. Uh, and they don't care whether they're getting a lot of credit or not. Because the credit comes naturally. If you win and succeed, everybody players, coaches, everybody is enhanced. Um, you know, so if you're working towards that diligently and law and and involved in that feeling, which doesn't make what difference your job is as an assistant, whether you're just tend to feel like you're just standing around, doesn't that that's not as important as how you feel towards what uh, where we're going. So uh, that's it for today. I hope you're enjoying your holiday season. I know some, maybe many of you are working at this time uh, and the holiday season tends to be over. But uh, at any rate, uh, I wish you well uh, with that and we'll see you next time.